Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 10, and I'm going to discuss an example for Gauss's law for electric fields. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Also, if you'd like news or information about or updates about my tutorial videos, you can follow me at adambt503 on Twitter. So the previous video to this, which is relevant, is number 9, where I discussed Gauss's law. And we saw the flux of the electric field through a surface, or a closed surface, was the total charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero. Now I'd like to do a small bit of revision and just confirmation of this. We saw for a single point charge, okay, so we, we took a spherical surface and we tried to calculate the, electric, the, the flux of the electric field through this particular spherical surface. So we needed to take E dot dA. We know that the electric field for a point charge is 1 over 4 pi epsilon zero. We have Q, a, Q, a single Q, divided by r squared r hat. So we know of course that the electric field decreases with the square of the distance. Next we took the dot product with the uh, spherical surface which we took. So the spherical sur surface um, has the following uh, in spherical coordinates. It's going to be r squared times the sine of theta times d theta d phi. Okay and it's in the r hat direction. Also we need to take the dot product so ignoring the dot product for the moment, we, we, what we find is as we increase the size of the, the sphere which we're measuring the flux through, so this one I'm drawing in blue now, which corresponds here, we're also increasing in size the area through which, uh, our, the area through which our electric field is extending, so this area inside here. So the point is that they cancel out and that the, there is no dependence on the surface. That is the, the whole point of Gauss's law, that Gauss's law is independent of the surface chosen. Alright, so for that reason we'll be able to use in this video, which is on uh, for a cube. Alright, so it, it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be a sphere, it can be anything because the dependence is going to cancel out anyway. Right, next what we saw is if we applied the divergence theorem, which you can see in my videos on vector calculus for electromagnetism, we we're able to show that the divergence of the electric field was equal to the charge density divided by epsilon zero. Now, to begin, if we take a cube, okay, and my art is shocking. But if we take a cube like this, okay, and we place a single charge at the corner, the back corner in this case, we want to calculate the flux through, we'll say, this face here, which is going to do with these two red bars. How do we calculate that? Well, we need to use Gauss's law. Gauss's law says that we need to talk about E dot dA. So we need to talk about how much of the field is perpendicular to dA. So let's take, if I, if I look at this particular this particular uh, face, which the uh, test charge or point, oh, excuse me, the source charge is part of, it because it's part of it, there will be no component of the field emitted from here which will go perpendicular to that face. So there can be no flux through that face. Similarly, if you look at the face at the back here, which I'm shading in blue, that is also part of the test charge in many, or the test charge is part of it. So there can be no flux through that. And finally, there can be no flux through the bottom for the same reason. So the three surfaces which you can have no flux through are the bottom one, the back one as you look, and the left one as you look. And of course that leaves a further three through which we can have a flux. So if we just redraw that, okay, if we just redraw it like this, okay, redrawing it, bear with me now. Putting a charge here, so we saw that we saw the three which the flux was zero. But there is a flux through this face, a flux through this face, and a flux through this face. But we want to calculate the flux through the face as you look on the right hand side, which you're going to shade in the back. Now, of course, you can go ahead and talk about your, your E dot dA and getting your unit vectors for your field and all that sort of thing. But the whole point of Gauss's law is you can use symmetry. And this is a very neat trick here. So we're trying to come up with some sort of a symmetry argument in order to calculate the electric field. So Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it in blue. So let's say we have, there's our point charge, right? So I'm going to put it into my cube with my shocking drawing, and my shocking art. In actual fact, I'm going to have to draw that again because that is awful. I'm sorry. Okay, so, okay, there is my cube. And I want to calculate the flux through the face as you look on the right hand side. So there is my, there is my charge in the center. Now, what happens if I was to make another cube? Just extend it out this side here, 
Okay. I'm gonna I'm not gonna draw all of them. Now we'll say there's a shared face. We'll say this that this face here is going to be shared between the two of them. But if I just extend that on, I'm sure you'll see where we're going. If we extend it on to make four boxes like this, that means now what we're after doing is putting the, moving the charge from in the cent excuse me in the corner of a single cube to the center of a larger it's the, uh, a larger we'll say in this case rectangle, but it's not a cube. But if we now continue that on by putting some boxes down here, the same size of course, now we're after moving the, the charge from being in the corner of a small cube to being right in the center of a large cube. So it's the exact same, we're after basically swapping the problem from one that has no symmetry to one that does have symmetry. Now if you look at this, because if we can ignore all the faces inside, the only faces that matter are the outside faces. So this one, this one, the back one, the one on the left, the one on the top, and the one on the bottom. So there are six faces, but all of them will contribute to the flux. So e dot dA for all of them will be non-zero. So we're saying over here, so we have initially e dot dA, that's the field for a single charge, right? But because there are six faces, the flux is going, and this is just going to be q over epsilon zero. But we need to reduce it by a factor of six, because there are six big faces. So just looking at each of the big faces, they look like this. So each big face has four small small cubes. So in order to get the flux through any particular small cube, so that's that's the whole the, the big one, to get the flux through any one small face on a on a cube, we have e dot dA, we need to divide by six, and we need to divide by four, and that's q over epsilon zero. Alright? So what you find is that the total field through any one of the uh, any one of them, or we'll say to say the magnitude of the electric field, through any face uh, on uh, on the cube is going to be Q um, A over 24, sorry, E times A over 24, so one second now, just bear with me, sorry, we have E times A over 24, of course, is equal to Q over epsilon 0. Okay, so that is the, uh, that's through any particular wall. Okay, or we could write it in another way that the field is equal to E total divided by 24, which is equal to Q over 24 epsilon zero. Okay, that's another way of writing it. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.